friends, welcome to Food Prep Guide and welcome back to the Pantry Challenge. I am especially excited about tonight's meal because it uses one of our garden staples. We plan our garden according to the meals that we eat and today's meal is a spaghetti squash spaghetti. So picture spaghetti but instead of traditional flour based noodles we're going to be using spaghetti squash. We have been receiving several requests via email for gluten free and dairy free recipes and so I, I decided to move this meal up in the menu. This one wasn't due for about two more weeks, but we were getting so much good feedback and so many requests from you for a gluten-free, dairy-free recipe, so here it is. We have more also coming up. And I just wanted to let you know we are working, we are soon working hard on weekly menu plans that use food storage ingredients. And we're gonna be putting them out by themes. We'll have a gluten-free theme, a dairy-free theme, a chicken theme, a vegetarian theme, a uh, fish theme and all that and it will be seven days of meals that you can make from food storage we're really excited to release those okay I have been browning up I just finished browning up a pound of ground uh, turkey because that's just what we had in our freezer and to this I'm going to season it with my um, homemade sausage seasoning I call this sausage seasoning because it has the flavors of sausage but I don't actually use it to season sausage but it does season ground turkey and ground beef really really well for um, lots of different dishes especially a spaghetti dish like this so I'm just gonna season that real quick several years ago I stopped seasoning my meat while I was browning it because I, I was noticing that when I drained off the fat all those a lot of those spices were getting drained out with it so I started browning the meat and then draining it and then seasoning it and it just seems like the meat is a lot more flavorful that way so to this pot I'm just gonna add two jars of pasta sauce y'all I have the hardest time growing tomatoes I really 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 want to put up enough pasta sauce from our garden but I just have not gotten to the point yet where I can grow enough tomatoes to do that. Prayerfully, this will be the year for that. Ooh, this one doesn't want to open. I might have to get my strong son in here to open it for me. <laughs> I still can't get it. Hey, Rami, yeah. could you come open this pasta jar for me real quick? Try hard. Come on, put his muscle into it. <laughs> No? no? Okay. Uh, I'll try again. Uh, just use the, um, oh, I got it. You loosened it for me. Thank you. I got it. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. There we go. And as I always do, I'm going to put just a little bit of water in each of these jars, put the lid on, shake it up real good, and then pour it in there so we can get all the remnants left in these jars. Okay, I'm going to give that a good mix. And then I'm going to show you how we use some of our dehydrated products. Um, I am a huge fan of dehydrated products. If you have watched, you know, at least more than one of our videos, you probably already know that about me. Um, it's just so convenient, um, so such a great way to have fresh or fresh produce on your shelf in a shelf-stable format. So one way that we do it is I whenever I'm doing a pasta based dish or a meat sauce or uh, like a like a one pot skillet type of dish that has some kind of meat in it I will or some kind of excuse me some kind of sauce in it I will just put in handfuls of this is a shredded squash and zucchini mixture this is from our garden this past year and I'm gonna do two handfuls of that you can see I don't have to rehydrate this first. This is going to rehydrate perfectly in this spaghetti sauce. So that's two handfuls of squash and zucchini. Then I just do a really small handful of dehydrated celery. Try to crumble it up in there as I'm mixing. A little handful of dehydrated carrots just an excellent way to load up the dish with lots of nutrition. Ooh, I'm making a mess. <laughs> okay, and last but not least, dehydrated green and red bell peppers. I like lots of those in our spaghetti sauce. I'm going to 
mix that all good. And now I'm just going to place the lid on and let that cook for the on low for the whole time that we do the next step. So the next step is to bake our spaghetti squash. I'm going to set my oven to 400 degrees. And let's talk about the spaghetti squash, squash, squash. You notice how much smaller these are. So we had to pull our spaghetti squash a lot earlier this year than normal because they started getting this fungal disease. And I don't know if you could see all those brown spots. Now, when I say disease, I don't mean like it's not going to make us sick or anything. It's just a plant disease. It's not um, going to affect the taste or anything like that. And so the size that you get from the store will be slightly bigger than this. And I just, I'm showing you this because I have no, I don't really quite know what this is going to look like when I cut into it. It might not be uh, spaghetti noodle worthy, <laughs> um, but this one will be, and I'm just going to go ahead and process them the way that I would normally process a normal size spaghetti squash so that you can know how to do it. Normally I would do two regular size spaghetti squash for our family of five, just to give you an estimation of what, how many you might need. So to process these, we are just going to cut off that top stem. So once we have this stem cut off, we're just going to cut it lengthwise, um, just cutting it long ways so we can get two long pieces. Okay, so now we have two halves like this. I'm going to go ahead and process the other two real quick and I'll be right back. Okay, now that we have all of our spaghetti squash halved, we're going to take a big spoon and we're just spoon. We're going to take a big spoon and we're going to scoop out these seeds. If you've never made spaghetti squash before, you're going to be amazed and you'll understand why it's called spaghetti squash. You can already start to see how the flesh comes apart in little noodles, almost how they look like little noodles. And once they cook, they're going to look a lot more like noodles. Okay, next step is to take some olive oil. If you have some other kind of spray you would prefer to use, that's fine too, just whatever you like. And we're going to spray down the cut side. Next, we're going to salt and pepper them. This is just to taste or just eyeballing it. We'll taste it later and add more if we need to, but I don't usually need to add more. I do usually add garlic and onion at the very end, but we'll talk about that when we get there. Just a tad bit of pepper. Now we are actually going to turn them upside down. That olive oil helps those that salt and pepper to stick to it even then when we uh, flip them upside down. And the reason why is because it helps create like a little pocket of steam or whatever as they cook and it really steams, kind of steams the inside as the squash cooks without burning it. Okay, and now they're ready to go in the oven. I'm gonna pop these in the oven and we are going to let these cook for 45 minutes. And this, um, our meat sauce is going to be simmering on low for that whole 45 minute period as well, which is gonna give plenty of time for all those dehydrated vegetables to rehydrate. We'll be back then. So our oven just went off. I just took our spaghetti squash out. I turned the heat off on the meat sauce and now all that's left is to shred the spaghetti squash into noodles. Now this part can get a little bit tricky sometimes because that squash is really hot and I always use a pair of tongs but sometimes it's just so fall apart tender that it's kind of hard to hold on to so we'll see how it goes today but sometimes this next step can get a little bit tricky. Okay I'm going to hold the spaghetti squash into a bowl. I've tried a plate before and that really didn't work very well so now I'll just do it into a bowl. And then with a pair of tongs, you're going to hold your squash. I can't really see. I'm kind of blocking it. And you take the fork and you start at the top and you just start scraping down. And I want you to notice that as you scrape, it's creating long strands that look like spaghetti noodles. And that's what we want. We're going to scrape all the way until we get to the bottom of the skin, but we don't want to puncture the skin. And um, we certainly don't want any uh, skin into our, in our noodles. So don't. Don't, don't poke your fork too hard that way. Just kind of gently scrape it down. And you can see that it really falls very easily into the bowl. I'm not having to put much pressure on, the, on this fork at all. 
and it's just coming right out. There were still a little bit of a strands in there, but we have chickens and they love spaghetti squash. So I'm gonna just leave that for the chickens. I've got plenty more to do. And look how it creates these little noodles. Isn't that awesome? I was amazed when I first discovered spaghetti squash and they taste really good too. Okay, I'm going to finish processing all the rest of these spaghetti squash and I will show you what it looks like plated up. I forgot to mention that once I have all of the squash shredded, I do season with a little bit of garlic powder and a little bit of onion powder. It just adds a little extra flavor to the overall dish. There we go. You can see that noodle texture. Isn't that so cool? And if you don't know, spaghetti squash keeps in your pantry all winter long. Spaghetti squash is a winter squash. Um, <laughs> the, for, the very first time I ever grew spaghetti squash, I did not research it first. And I planted it at the end of fall thinking that it grew in the winter because it was called a winter squash. But that's not the case. It grows in the heat of summer, but it's called winter squash because it stores in your pantry all winter long. We usually, if we don't eat them all, these can last in our pantry until June of the following year. There we go, let's plate it up. We just put a little bit of our noodles in the bottom. And scoop some of that meat sauce on. we go spaghetti squash spaghetti it's kind of hiding the meat sauce is hiding all the noodles <laughs> but I hope you give it a try it is really good and it's gluten-free grain-free and yet you still get all the wonderful taste of traditional spaghetti hope y'all enjoy bye mm -hmm.